This video is brought to you by MUBI, a curated streaming service dedicated to streaming and elevating great cinema from all around the globe. You can get a whole month free at mubi.com slash hoc2023. I feel like some people will comment that they are copying the criteria and all of that. We know the criteria. Sofia Coppola, Somewhere. It's one of my favorite films of all time. I watched it in my room, in my parents' house in June and I started crying. I just couldn't hold, I just started bawling my eyes out. I felt like there's a lot of truth, there's a lot of truth in this film and it's set in a world that I really understand. Yes, but no one's here. But I remember watching Love at the Toronto Film Festival and I was late. And I was rushing and I saw Gaspar No walking past me and he's like, you're late. Really? Yeah. <laughs> this is the complete animated series of all the Batman comics. Oh. So sometimes when I don't feel like watching anything super intense, I pop this in. The, the writing and the storytelling is actually so simplistic but so effective in, in these pieces. You can actually see a lot of the inspiration behind the films. Huh. And it's cool to kind of go back to these and then see what each filmmaker has decided to do with their kind of interpretation of the, of the, of the character yeah. and the story. So we are here. Uh, this is half of it. Some of it is that side. That's out that of frame. Well. Ah, okay. Yeah. Ye dekhe, bhi hai thoda sa. To, uh, so, this is half of it. Some of it is that side. That's out of frame. Okay. 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 Yeah, I mean, uh, Criterion, they have started doing 4Ks recently. Huh. So there's only a few titles on 4K. Hmm. I think there's Mulholland Drive, there's Sound of Metal. No, no, now it's a lot, man. Now it's a lot in 4K. It's a lot in 40-50, but not more than that. Yeah, true. Compared to what they have on Blu-ray, there are thousands. Yeah. Wonker Bhai has a lot of films in 4K. I think I have. The problem is that because I don't have as much space, I've had to double stack them. So, for example, in the Alphabet L, there's also a lot of L behind this hmm. section there. So eventually, right. hopefully, if I do get a better place, then I will. Do you stack them yourself? Yeah, like so basically, alpha water, water alphabetically is the way that I've always done it. Huh. And so we basically, I got them from my old house. I used to live yeah. in Juhu with my parents. I moved here about two and a half years ago, two years hmm. ago. Hmm. So we get them in a huge bag, put them all on the floor, and then alphabetically start. Hmm. Kind of doing it and then. And since when have been collecting? Since Bachman I was 13. Oh. It's been 20 years. Yeah. Wow. 19, 18, 19 years. Yeah. So cool, yeah. Yeah. But tell me, matlab, uh, what is like? What are some films that you love here the most? Yeah. So I can see the master here. I'll show you. Um, this is one of my favorite films. I love Burning. Oh, Burning. I love Burning. Um, because lovely cover. The thing about burning again is it says a lot, but the mood that he creates as well is masterful. Yeah. And I particularly love um, what's the, the actress? Uh, Steven Yeun. Steven Yeun, yes. Steven, Steven Yeun's character. Yeah. Um, I love that kind of like. It's about class difference also, right? It's about yeah, these people that yeah. are com from completely different social classes. And it's, it's a play on the Great Gatsby In a way, yeah. formula. Yeah. And you know, um, I really, like that is a dream role for me. Oh, Steven Young's Steve, part. Steven Young's part. Yeah. I think that uh, that's something that I could really bring myself to. Yeah. Um, and um, it's, just, it's also so fascinating, right? Because it says so much about the political kind of climate and how when you're on you belong to a certain social class, what your life is like in a part of, like in that part of the world rather. Yeah. And yeah. Um, also the great thing about this film is it's so unpredictable. Hmm. You have no idea where the film is going, right? That's so true. Absol like it's just like this this absolute master is just kind of like, uh, he's got you on his rope and he's kind of taking you along. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you're constantly being surprised yeah. and... Um, but also, I, I also, it, also at the same time, there are so many literary references as well, right? Matlab, Murug, it's, a, it's based on a Murakami, Murakami short. Murakami, but at the same time, the Murakami novel in its, the Murakami story in itself was based on another story. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. the Murakami story was called Barn Burning and oh. the original story was called Burning. Okay. And uh, the, 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 the book, yeah. yeah she's, she, she's reading the original one. The uh, okay. burning. So it is just a lot of, you know, so many layers, so many literary layers. I mean, one from the other came. I mean, the band burning came from burning and then this film came from that. And I mean, so obviously, so the, much de history. the details aren't completely clear to me because it's been a while since I saw them. But yeah. 
she gets picked up from the airport doesn't she yeah 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 later in the film later in the film pehle wo kaam kar rahi hoti she goes and she shows up with this man yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just that's the thing is like it's so uh oh, it's been so long but it still affected you so much that i remember it's certain moments forget i also like i remember so and there's also like the so have you seen any, any other lee chang dong film with name sir peppermint uh, what's it called one is poetry which is one I, of his this is probably the only, only one that i've seen um uh, but yeah like amazing filmmaker there's like there's like um there's so much kind of narrative kind of depth in every action and every scene that might seem random Hmm. in in a film like this you know what i mean it's like yeah. everything is kind of there for a reason uh, yeah, it's like this puzzle that you're kind of trying to peel away yeah in the end when it all comes together is when you really realize and even the um like the the you know the the, the uh, intimacy of that space that the protagonist that lives in that very kind of small yeah um was that her place that's her place isn't that's it that's her place yes. that's her place yeah and then steven yeun has this like incredible mansion big or apartment. big apartment almost yeah. and and um yeah absolutely yeah i mean I, this is just a film that just kept me kind of hooked man i've seen it a couple of times really i love i've seen it i've seen this and the sequence especially you know times. this the yeah. sequ- sequence on the cover when they all three sitting in the smoking yeah. and then she get, gets up and starts dancing and yeah. and um no it's as a phenomenal film i really love this film yeah and uh, this is one of my favorite films It's a film called Beast hmm. by Michael Pierce. Hmm. This is the film that really um where Jessie Buckley basically burst onto the scene hmm. uh as this powerhouse actress. Hmm. And then after that was uh the Maggie Chilton Hall directorial that she did with right. Olivia Colman. Yeah. Can't remember. Lost Daughter. Lost Daughter. Yeah. And then she also did the uh, Charlie Kaufman film. Forget, oh really? Yeah, forget the oh, name. Oh, acha acha, yeah yeah. I'm thinking of ending things. Yeah yes. yeah. So and and then she's now doing a lot of big. Well, she's amazing. Yeah, she's unbelievable. Actress. So I saw yeah. her in this film oh, like years ago, hmm. and I was like, who is that actress? Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, funnily enough, this is from the filmmaker who made that uh, film with Riz Ahmed that he did after Sound of Metal. Oh. The 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 way where he uh, the science fiction film. Okay. So anyway so this guy uh, is an independent filmmaker from the UK he made this film this film is a thriller set in a um like a small town in the UK and it is a hmm. film where it's um it's 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 about Jessie Buckley's character right like she's predominantly the central character hmm. but the male role is also so intriguing and um you know it it's this 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 uh, actor is so charismatic that this is a film I always wanted to kind of redo I don't like to do like I've never done a remake. Yeah. But if I had to remake a film, it would be this one. Wow. And I think that this story, if you watch the film, it lends itself perfectly to like either Goa or Pondicherry. Really? Uh yeah. And I've really like wanted to kind of do this. I have to yeah. watch it, yeah then. Uh yeah, it's um it it's it's just it's so much fun. It's just beautifully crafted. Hmm. Great performances, very moody. Hmm. uh very unpredictable and um yeah you should definitely definitely check this out and i think that it lends itself to indian like an indian adaptation very well actually <laughs> you can you can do <laughs> it and then this this is a film called bellflower this is a very uh this is an independent american film okay that uh really it's hard to articulate but it really kind of sums up independent filmmaking they made this on a very very shoestring budget hmm. it's about these two friends that basically do everything together and um it's in a way it's kind of about growing up and responsibilities and about you know wanting to kind of live in this perfect kind of world you create with you and your friends when you're a young adult hmm. and then ultimately you have to kind of grow up and hmm. the world is going to disappoint you yeah. i think thematically that's what kind of the film is about but it's just done in such an innovative way this is a hidden gem uh, it's called bellflower okay. so they just keep kind of you'll keep seeing these films do you, just, do you have a favorite pta film yeah i like um, i like boogie nights well, i saw the master i here. like the master yeah it's master right here. so i also have oh, mr robot mr robot yeah are you a yeah. fan i am a big fan of the first two seasons and then after that i kind of yeah i kind of lost it but sam yeah. smell Yes. This is the filmmaker who's also made an incredible romantic film called Comet. Oh with, yes, of course. Uh, with of course. Justin Long and yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Amy Rosen who's now his wife. Oh, yes. Which is um 
one of the best recent kind of romantic films I've 100%, seen. Hundred percent, yes. And so the master actually, I I have a very good setup here. Mm. I so the first when I first started making my own money, all my own money went into uh, setting up this space right. that you see here. I bought those floor standing speakers. You can get shots of those later, and all of this Macintosh equipment. Mm. And this projector, the Sony 4K projector, I've been using for about seven years now. So this is a lamp-based 4K full HD projector. I just put a new lamp mm. after I exhausted the lamp for about six years. But I'm going to update this with a laser projector that's even sharper. So I'm very kind of into a visual and sound. This whole room mm. has been soundproofed and treated for sound, so you can't hear the road. Um, yeah. The 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 floor has been treated. The ceiling has been treated. So the master shot on 70. Mm. Is, it's shot on film, isn't it? Yes. The the master shot on film. Yeah. And, Most um, PTA films. And yeah. Even licorice pizza. Even licorice pizza. Yeah. yeah. So when you watch this, where I mean, in this setup, it's an un unbelievable experience. And uh, yeah, I'm sure. I I just love all films that are about kind of leaders of cults, <laughs> and like cults. Even the Elizabeth Olsen film, uh, Martha Marcy and and Marilyn. Right. It's kind of about a cult, about this girl that gets kind of engulfed in this cult. Okay. Um, okay. I love like I love the I would love to play the leader of a cult. That would be and it's something that's not been done here, you know. Yeah. Um, even the Idol, the show that we were talking about, the Sam Levinson, yeah. the weekend plays um, this kind of like cult leader kind of character. Yeah. I think that there's something really exciting about that. Hmm. So so yeah, this is here, and um, mid nineties. Mid nineties. Again, another film shot on film. Yes. Shot on Super Sixteen, I think. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, Jonah Hill. So Hill, the thing, directorial debut. Director. So I'm also really into clothes and shoes, and a lot of that is very skater influenced, actually. Right. So a lot of like the stylistic, um, like I really love like the rebellion of skate culture, yes. and like punk rock and rock and roll. Yeah. And um, uh, that's a very suburban American kind of Californian thing that you kind of see in mid nineties. Yeah. It's a, about kind of um, adulthood. It's about growing up. Really, it's a coming of age story about a yeah. young guy. Also, when you talked to me earlier inside about me directing, yeah. you see how Jonah Hill kind of made something that he really understood. Yeah, so it was very close to exactly. his own experiences. Exactly. So yeah. maybe you know, maybe if I were to ever kind of get behind the camera, it would probably be something in that world of film. Nice. You know. Um, um, so there's this, and then this is one of my favorite films as well, Enemy by by yes. Danny Villeneuve. Yeah. So this, I uh, think, anyway, is. Did, did you? What is? What is your interpretation of anime? I mean, I can't see. Honestly, if you ask me, I'm, I'm not ready with this answer because it's been a good like three, four years since yeah, yeah. I saw it. But there are certain things that you but remember. When you saw it, did you make sense of it? Because I couldn't. Make the, it is one of those films. Jinka, I haven't been able to make sense of the film, but I still liked it so much just because of the visual experience that it was. So exactly. So the thing is, when you're so captivated by the filmmaker's craft and the acting and yeah. just the overall ambiance of the film. You watch it because you're just engulfed, and then later you probably go online. You read what other people yeah. are saying, and that's yeah. how you become a part of the cinephile community. You know, yeah, yeah. that's what it's about. You have your own kind of idea, and then people, you know, kind of maybe complete the puzzle for you. Yeah. And then once you have access to that new information, you go back and rewatch it. Yeah. And it makes complete sense, or it, yeah. it, you yeah. see it kind of differently. But this is a dream role for any actor to do. I would love to do something like this. I think that hmm. this is something that's completely down my alley. A lot of the Jake Gyllenhaal films, actually, um, I think that he makes he makes some very really interesting choices. Nightcrawler, something I could see myself, mm. uh, maybe you know, in that in that kind of space. Mm. And um, the Father, have you seen the Father? I haven't yet. I've I've heard I bought it, but I heard it's it's quite a it's emotionally phenomenal. moving film. So I've kind of kept myself emotionally moving. Yeah, and also uh, just from a filmmaking perspective, it's just so interesting because it is about. a man who is losing his memory or who has lost a considerable right. uh portion of his memory and the film also kind of completely disorients you because the sets keep on changing constantly sure. and the changes are extremely subtle so for example if the painting is green in the next scene it will be slightly pinker pinker yeah and uh, you to the naked eye you're probably not realizing it but subconsciously it is affecting you And by the time the film ends, it's like a completely different set. Everything is changed. Right, so they're trying to put you in into the but, the world of the protagonist. Yeah, yeah. but it, but it's really interesting. In fact, uh, because it was originally a play, and the same guy who had written the play right. and has directed the film. Okay, it was first film, and uh, Nasiruddin Shah used to do a play based on this in India as well. Okay, which used to be pretty great. And I didn't yeah. know the backstory. 
I just हाँ यार and uh, and yeah like but the the unfortunate part is that the director I'm forgetting his name but he made a film after this called The Sun which was a film last year with Hugh Jackman in it and that was a terrible film oh really <laughs> I mean and, uh, I guess people, that can happen yeah मतलब एक article था उसके बारे में जिसमें लोग बोल रहे थे कि after watching The Sun you'll be forced to reevaluate whether you really like the father or not <laughs> that's mean yeah yeah film critique can be can be quite interesting yeah but uh, no this is uh, sofia coppola somewhere yeah it's one of my favorite films of all time so this film i watched it when i was a student in southern california yes i drove to a cinema quite far away uh because it wasn't playing in it wasn't a wide release hmm. and i watched it and i was eating my popcorn eating my candy watching it hmm and i liked it but i didn't love it Hmm. but because her craft was so great and the environment and the ambiance she had created was so mesmerizing that i'm like you hmm. know what maybe this is a film to pick up on blu-ray and watch once more hmm. and the second time i watched it i was just it it spoke to me in a very different way and then i came back to india after finishing hmm. college hmm. and i watched it in my room in my parents house in jew and i started crying wow i just couldn't hold i just started bawling my eyes out hmm. you know so I think this film speaks to me on a very kind of personal level. Personal level. It is it, it because I think you know it's a little bit about maybe this guy that's kind of lost in this uh, in this world and you know he's this actor and there's this perception of him and I really find those things very interesting. Um mm. I felt like there's a lot of truth there's a lot of truth in this film and it's set in mm. a world that I really understand. Yeah. Um and I love her approach you know it's kind of like this French new wave Yes, thing for sure. That she's got going on. Yeah, But she's influenced by a lot of Godard as well, isn't she? Godard, yeah, Godard for sure, hundred percent. Godard, yeah. to sabse zada hai. You know, I'm saying, but Lost in Translation visually is so different. Right. That is more, you know, Wonker Y. But this is this is a lot. This is very French. New this wave. is extremely French new wave. Yeah. yeah, which is why Sophie Coppola is so interesting because she takes inspiration from a lot of different places. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, she does. And the music is by Phoenix in okay. Samba. Phoenix is one of my. Fa- favorite rock bands phoenix's oh. lead singer is sofia coppola's husband ah, and okay. they scored this film well wow, okay. um, so yeah i've also spent a lot of time in this part of the world okay i studied there in in southern california so all right so uh, there's something just very very like remarkably personal hmm. that i you feel you seen after sun yeah i loved it did you feel like there were some um, stylistic similarities Styl- yes. yeah it it felt like they both these films belong to the same world but at the same time like that was just such a the, different I, film i think that similarities are also they both kind of not forcing you to feel they're just kind of yeah. presenting to you this truth yeah. and ultimately they creep up on you and they both destroy you you yeah. know if you if you really get into it yeah but for us for somebody that doesn't it can also be like watching pain dry you know yeah it's polarizing true, true. in that sense um what else is here gaspar no <laughs> gaspar no is here climax um this film on my sound system is just i'm sure better than any theater in the country yeah. trust me it's just mental uh only gaspar no can make a dance film that that becomes about a trip gone like a drug trip gone wrong yeah but uh, i remember watching love at the toronto film festival and i hmm. was late and i was uh, rushing and i saw huh. gaspar no oh. walking past me he's like you're late really yeah <laughs> Walked in. I saw the film. Would you ever want to do something uh, like a Gaspino film? Of course, okay. totally. Have you seen Deepan? No, actually, I haven't. It's unbelievable. It's on Criterion as well now. It's oh, unbelievable. Really? Who is it by? Oh, this is that Sri Lankan ja- film. It's by Jack. It is a French film that is based yeah, on Sri Lankan. Yeah, from Jack's Odyssey. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it's about immigrants. Hmm. It's unbelievable. Cool. There's so many of these films I'm like scared to go back to because I remember like they really fucked with me emotionally at the yeah. time, and I'm yeah. like, man, I can't, I can't feel like this for three days right now. I just don't have the time <laughs> yeah. because I have to like move and like make things happen, you know? Because yeah. these films can really like just like stop yeah. you in your tracks. Hundred percent. That that happened with me after after Sun. Yeah. And uh, for one full day, I saw it in the morning, in fact. And for one full day, I I just could not talk to anyone. Anyone? Yeah. I was just. I was so emotionally. Div- I was honestly feeling empty. That's how I felt. Empty for the for the rest of the day. And 
only the next morning did i realize that you know very well deserved best actor oscar nomination 100% pleasantly surprised with that one yeah. um the tar this was going to age as the, uh, the 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 biggest best actress oscar snub in history ever just unbelievable <laughs> i can't believe it or when you know this drive as well yeah yeah drive Which, of course is now well seen well documented yeah. by a lot of people um big lebowski is one of my personal favorites this I is the 4k version it's oh nice very rare but it's a cool cover art yeah um sure. yeah it's the it's on oh, the back nice. of his jacket yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah have you seen the soderbergh film unseen no i haven't actually okay unseen unseen it's got claire foy from the crown oh and um it's he made the whole film on the iphone i think oh nice phenomenal film it's a thriller um i love soderbergh man sex lies in videotape yeah unseen side effects hmm. traffic he's unbelievable man he's soderbergh is unbelievable and his his films also very entertaining you know there's yeah. some indian films as well i can see yeah there's a uh, I get sent also you know some, back in the day producers used to send blue rays right right so this is uh, dil dhadakne do yeah zoe akhtar do you like do you, are you fond of zoe akhtar i work? love zoe akhtar i love zoe akhtar's uh, work hmm. i, I think she's she was one of the she started this uh, you know new completely new style of making urban films yeah yeah uh, which of course farhan made ियन it it really puts you there hmm. and it also has such interesting kind of commentary on religion and social classes yeah. and uh all that all that kind of stuff uh, i love paul schrader man this is um oh. what i love like the film that he did with american gigolo oh yes paul schrader also i absolutely he did a film with uh, oscar isaac recently which was phenomenal it's about a gambler really 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 good yeah Um this is this is the thing with me dude it's just like now when I'm talking yeah. is that I'm just watching stuff you know uh this is romantic comedy is one of the best romantic oh, comedy Oh I love I love the last See this is the thing we don't make this kind of movie 100% We don't make this kind of movie and this kind of yeah. movie is entertaining it's accessible I also feel that it must be one of the like lesser expensive films so right? cheap, Yeah I mean the, I don't really see yeah. it's just great writing Yeah um and then You have this crazy film, Mandy. Absolutely bonkers, this film. Hmm. And uh, visually, just so exciting. Audio-wise, such brave leaps. Yeah. Um, stylistically, just you don't see stuff like this, you know. Yeah. Have you seen Raw? Yeah, I've seen Raw. You know, not my, not my kind <laughs> of uh, thing, man. I didn't even like. Uh, I didn't. Titan. Yeah, Titan. I saw it at the London Film Festival. I couldn't get through it, man. Yeah. It's just, it's just not for me, you know. Yeah. It's just that. I get it I get it I, I mean I understand the craft and you know one of my all time favorites Yeah great great film really really What's your what are your favorite Coen Brothers films Actually I like this one I like this one This is my one. favorite as well I like my this one I like No Country um Big Lebowski Big Lebowski I love Blood Simple Barton Fink and all I appreciate Fargo 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 also I like but I have to revisit those films because I've seen them many years ago kid. I've not revisited. I've revisited a lot of Coppola's, Scorsese stuff. I've not revisited so much of the Coen Brothers stuff. Right. That's probably pending for me to do. Um, But the newer uh, Coen Brothers films are so different from like the older films. Like Burn After Reading and stuff. Huh? Burn After Reading and stuff. Or um, no, no, no. Even Inside Llewyn Davis. Huh. So because in in Fargo, you know, as serious as the subject was, there was always this underlying humor in the film. The characters were slightly eccentric, right? Yeah, in yeah. Fargo, in Big Lebowski. But inside Lewin Davis was just complete, just you know, this character study and studying his crisis. I really, really like Inside Lewin Davis so much. No, I love it. I actually, this is another one that I need to rewatch because I saw it when it came out. I have a lot of Criterion collection, lot of Criterion hmm. collection. What I do is I wait for the Barnes and Noble sale, hmm. and then I just buy. I never buy them when they're not on sale. Yeah. So I wait for the half price, and then yeah, I just yeah. buy. Like I do it once a year. Yeah. Um, you know. 
um, see like this, I I I I made mistakes sometimes. Hmm. I buy two, my oh, mistake shit. because I buy one and then I'm like not sure, you know. So the You're last. You're not day, sure of what. If I have it, and oh. then I see it on sale, and then I'm like, I just. Which one is it? The last. The last days of disco, yeah. Um, this one's sealed. This one is watched. And uh, yeah, what else? And then these are some films I haven't seen. Have you seen Pain and Glory? Or no. any film by Almodovar? I've seen a lot of Almodovar, but uh, I haven't seen Pain. I've seen Volver. I've seen uh, hmm. Talk to Her, but I have not seen uh, seen this. Oshim Oshim sent me this. I think this. you might really like Pain, Pain and, and Glory. Glory yeah. yeah. Oshim sent me this. This is a European release uh, Blu-ray of Miss Lovely. Oh wow! Yeah, very very rare. So good. Very very. He sent me a couple of copies. The line here somewhere. So, uh, Oshim is a filmmaker I've been talking to for a very long time. Nice. But not found the opportunity hmm. yet. Uh, this is uh, Ramin Berani's Man yes. Push Cart. We were talking about this film, na? Yeah. Yesterday. <laughs> I had, uh, was very auditioned for Rajkumar Rao's role in The White Tiger. You did? And uh, came actually pretty close to being cast, but then didn't, hmm. didn't quite work out in the end. Okay. But through that, uh, through that journey, I had um, I had a couple of a round of auditions. I first auditioned for Test, then I. Audition for Ramin, and then obviously really got along with Ramin, and then I started watching and watching his films. Yeah. Of course, you know. Um, this is this is a really beautiful uh, and and uh, I mean, in my opinion, a much better film than The White Tiger. I I enjoyed The White Tiger as well, though. I liked it. And um, unpopular opinion. <laughs> yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I thought I I, I had, you know this is from. The Sadfi brothers before they became big. Oh, yeah. Heaven knows what. It's a very disturbing film, though. Hmm. So you just only watch it if you have the stomach for it. And um, I have the Godfather trilogy in 4K. 4K Ultra HD. Hmm. All the films in 4K. You know, uh, Kapula recently joined Instagram. Oh, I, I followed him. Yeah. And uh, and somebody asked him because he's been doing AMAs. Yeah. Uh, and somebody asked him, "What's your favorite uh, Sufi Kapoor film?" He also said somewhere. Very good taste. <laughs> <laughs> but that's an unexpected. People probably would have not expected him to say. For that. him to say, but you know, it kind of makes sense because maybe because it's her most personal, personal film, film. You yeah. know, it won the Golden Bear at the Golden Lion at the Venice it Film did? Festival. Yeah. Wow. Tarantino was on the jury, and okay. they they um, they said that because they used to be ex or lovers or whatever. Because people Tarantino and Sufi Kapoor. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Because people couldn't understand the brilliance of the film, you know. I think a lot mm. of people it polarized a lot of people, but it did win the Golden Lion at Venice. Okay. And um, I think there was a lot of other films that that year, but uh, what else? Uh, Being John Malkovich, Charlie Kaufman, hmm. directed by Spike Jones. See a lot of comedies as well. Spike uh, Jones, by the way, is Sophia's. Yeah, ex. that yeah. yeah. Um, that famous. Blue is the warmest color. Another crazy, unbelievable film. Yeah, Boyhood. I got Boyhood again. See now, Boyhood has come out on 4K, but I already have it on Blu-ray, so I'm very reluctant. This is one of my favorite films of all time. A lot I've talked about this in the mm. in the past. Yeah. For me, Badlands and Days of Days of Heaven with Richard Gere, which well, should be here somewhere. D. Days can't find it. See, this is the thing. Can't. It's reached a point now where. I I literally I stand here for hours to find something, hmm. and then when I find it by that time I don't want to watch it anymore. You know, so <laughs> and then you order just another one. I order another one. Um, yeah. But anyway, Badlands and Days of Heaven for me are two of uh, Malik's most uh, entertaining, engaging, uh, hmm. and accessible, accessible. films True. that he made back back in the day. Yeah. And. For any young male actor, this is hmm. who would not want to be Charlie Sheen in this film. Yeah. There's something so intoxicating about being kind of that outsider that hmm. shows up, and then it's it's like a Bonnie and Clyde kind of feeling. This film, right? yeah. It's yeah. about these two lovers on the run, and it's it's about celebrity and American obsession and hmm. violence, and hmm. it's a very and would the way that he shot it only during magic hour or in the morning or the evening. Hmm. That lovely golden light sh shooting on film, kind of, it has that kind of journalistic documentary kind of like approach, hmm. makes you feel kind of very intimately close to these people. Yeah. Um, and you're not supposed to kind of care about this guy because he's hmm. he's done bad things, but you yeah. still you can't help yourself. Yeah. So um, 
so yeah, where is this? Is here. Um, I'm I'm not really very big on Wes Anderson, you know. Oh really? I can't really except the first couple of ones like Bottle Rocket mm. and and um, the Darjeeling, mm. um, and what what is the other one? The Bottle. Uh, Tannen bombs. Royal yeah, bombs. yeah. Besides the first. Moonray Kingdom also you know, right? Moonray. You know, I I don't remember it. Okay. But I'm not like I'm not like as big on Wes Anderson. Got it. Got I it. just feel like it's a bit too eclectic and a bit too like inaccessible for me. in terms of where like i'm really don't know what it's about right. like it's beautiful but i don't know what it's about right. what about you how do you feel about i mean okay i do not dislike his films at all but you can sit through the so whole thing with so moonrise kingdom was a really influential film for me okay because that film like really i i that film i could really connect with and darjeeling limited also but after that uh, the rest of the rest of the films and and ball rocket as well but the rest of them i'm okay with But then later, I saw Fantastic Mr. Fox. The anime. anime yeah, yeah, that I really, really like. Okay. So yeah, I'm also, but but some films of his I really but like a lot. But what's the one that you remember, Timothy Chalamet, the last one? Oh, French Dispatch. What? How? What was going on there? Right? <laughs> how is anybody like? How? I think that that film again. Uh, Owner told me that a lot of it also just came from his love for the New York Times yeah. when he was growing up, right? Yeah. So I think that okay. was also just a lot of just personal tributes there. I see. Yeah. I also love Babylon this year. It's one of I thought Babylon. Was, yeah, tremendously underrated. Yeah. yeah. I I Babylon. was blown away by it. Yeah. I loved it. I'm get to watch it. I started. It's phenomenal. It's out on 4K now. Have you seen the film Perfect Sense? You should see it. It's Perfect uh, Sense. No. Jude Law and uh, sorry, is it Jude Law, Evan McGregor and Eva Green? Acha. <sighs> Evan McGregor and Eva Green. Nice. It's um it's a film that came out a long time ago but it's kind of about the world ending. Uh, it's a it's a love story. It's a cool, cool film. It's very very dusty. Hmm. Prisoners, Arrival. Yeah, all the all the Dennis Villeneuve films. Yeah, Art of Self Defense is yeah, one of the lesser. Yeah, that's Michael uh, Jesse Eisenberg. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Jesse Eisenberg and <laughs> a very quirky, eccentric. Yeah. Very very, very colorful. Indie. Yeah yeah yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is also something cool. This is the complete animated series of all the Batman comics. Oh. So sometimes when I don't feel like watching anything super intense, yeah, I pop this in. Um the the writing and the storytelling is actually so simplistic but so effective in in these pieces. Hmm. And you can actually see a lot of the inspiration behind the films. Huh. And it's cool to kind of go back to these and then see the um what each filmmaker has decided to do with their kind of interpretation of the of the of the character yeah. and the story. Did you yeah. used to read the comics as a kid? No, no, no. Okay. Um Buffy the Vampire Slayer I used to watch on oh, Star really? World when I was growing up. Was it ever on uh, was it ever playing in India? Yeah, yeah, on Star World. Oh. And I remember I used to come home from school and it used to be something I used to watch with my sisters. Yeah. Like Joss Whedon, right? Joss Whedon and it has a tremendous amount of nostalgic value. I bought yeah. this DVD for like 10 pounds the whole thing. I went back, I saw a couple of episodes. What's really cool about it is like the world used to be so simple back then, man. Yeah. You know, just kids going to school, wanting to have a good time, and being vampires. Being, yeah, I mean, it's just, <laughs> and it just, it, it's so like there's something so like rock and roll and yeah, free yeah. about it. I know exactly what. And you now mean. it's just about phones and iPads and freaking yeah. Twitter. Have you seen the show called like Freaks and Geeks? No, no, no. Do you, you know that show? No, I don't. I don't. Seth Rogen, uh, Jonah Hill, uh, James Franco, Jason Segel, right? Uh, Linda Cardinelli. All of these people started with that show. Okay. It was like they were just young kids back then. Right. It was all of their debuts, and uh, it was made mainly by uh, Judd Apatow. Like he was the executive producer. There was there were more writers, all of whom later went on to become showrunners, directors, and I would strongly recommend that show I'll to you. The out. problem that show was that it got cancelled after eighteen episodes abruptly because of problems with the network. But even today, it is one of the best things made on high school. Film or show? I'll check it out. I didn't even know that this existed. Yeah, I mean, it it never really became famous in India that much because even in the US, it has this cult audience. Okay. But just imagine, dude, like James Franco, Seth Rogen, उनका पहला काम कुछ भी. That's insane. I know. That's I how they no started. Idea. Judd Apatow का एक तरीके से it was in a way the launching pad. Nice. Yeah, but extremely, extremely good. Uh, very similar to uh, Buffy, Buffy in its treatment. I think we've discussed. Quite a lot. Yeah. Lighthouse. I mean, you know, we can of course keep on. Yeah. I mean, not even. I mean, like this so is not even ten percent. Yeah. There's like films behind this. Yeah, there's some older films as well. Yeah, I can see Yadon ki Barat and. 
some older Hindi films. Yeah, this is kind of an accumulation of like a lot of years, you know. Uh, people like me buying films, my dad buying films, people sending yeah. films. This Zodiac Upar. Yeah, Zodiac. Weeds is one of my favorite television shows of Weeds, all time. Yes, the Showtime show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I miss, I miss. That's the, I miss the early, that early two thousands. Early two thousands, man. Yeah. I really miss that time. A lot of great shows, both in comedy like Veep, Curb Your Enthusiasm, all of these shows started the back then. The writing back then, yeah. man. Or you yeah. think that's just us being nostalgic? I don't think so. You don't think so? Have you seen Always Sunny in Philadelphia? I've seen a couple of episodes of it. I know of the show, but I never yeah. like became like, I never got into it as such. But I, I'm aware of the show. Yeah, it is like even now it is one of the longest running shows. sitcoms. Okay. Not one of the, it is the longest running sitcom ever. Abhi uska 18, 19 season chal raha hai. I love, uh, I love like weeds. I love entourage. Yeah. I love Californication. Yeah, Californication. Uh, I love like, uh, I love like a lot of Los Angeles based yeah. shows. Even the Idol. Yeah. Uh, it's again very LA based. I think because I've lived in Southern California, I kind of have like a little, even somewhere, I have yeah. a certain like a soft spot for that part of the world. You know. Yeah. Have you seen that uh, Andrew Garfield film, um, Under the Silver Lake? Oh, it's one of my favorite films. I have right? it here. I told Vasan, I told Vasan Bala when oh. we were shooting for Spotlight that we should do something like Under the Silver oh, Lake. Spotlight together. was very Under the Silver Lakey. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There were a lot of the absurdity. Yeah. Under the Silver Lake, though, I mean, the bilkul he absurd and it's still so much fun. The Wire also, I can see. Uh, yeah, yeah. I tried. I tried rewatching it recently. I got through a couple of episodes, but then I kind of stopped. Still good, but slow. Uh -huh. It needs. It needs your patience. patience. Yeah, it needs yeah. patience. Um, this is John and Jane, one of Osham's first his documentary. Oh, nice! Yeah, that uh, very rare. You can't find this DVD now. Hmm. But Kher, uh, Harsh, thank you so much for uh, for this tour. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, I feel like some people will comment that they are copying the criterion and all of that. We know that the criterion. We are. This is. I mean, there is no criterion closet. It's one of Sean Baker's first films. Starlet. Yes. Really, really cool film. And once you, you watch this, you can see like um, the inspiration for like Tangerine and yes. like not the inspiration, but just but that you very can see kind where of where it started. Where it started, exactly. Yeah. Like that very kind of rooted, very yeah. American. Very, and the colors. Yeah, yeah. And uh, what? Red Rocket, was it? Red Rocket, yes. Red Rocket. Ah, this is sorry. This is one of my favorite films of all time. All time, the Souvenir Part One and Two okay. by uh, Joanna Hogg. It's unbelievable, unbelievable. The, these, I saw the first film um, on Blu-ray in my old house, and then I saw the second one, the sequel at the London Film Festival. And dude, this is actually probably somebody asked you about sequels, right? Part. This is one of the best Part One and Two films ever in the history of. Films ever. It's unbelievable. Like it's so personal. It's mm. so intimate. Um, it's her own story about like how she went to film school, the man she fell in love with, okay. her journey basically as an artist, mm. her relationship with her mother. So mm. Tilda Swinton and her daughter star in this. And okay. this is her daughter's first work. Her name is Honor Swinton. Mm. So, um, so yeah, these are the films that people don't really talk about, you know, yeah. as much. Yeah. Like even in the films, like the slightly alternative films that people celebrate. You somehow these these films go missing. I was like, this film. This is one of the coolest uh, films on Criterion Collection. It's called Smooth Talk. Uh, it's got a young Laura Dern, hmm. who's unbelievably beautiful and alluring in this film. Um, super, super cool film. Uh, this is this is also really very, very, very entertaining film. And then yeah, we have some some. Um, more Criterion, Vintage Richard Linklater. Yes. We have here, and uh, you know this guy, Warren Beatty for me. Yes. Is one of the coolest fucking guys. Yeah. Ever, like he's done some of the some very very interesting work, actually. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I, th I think that's why Criterion is a great school for anybody to kind of like go back in time a little bit, you know. Just, I can see uh, Tarkovsky. Yeah, Film Stalker, well. is it? Yeah. <laughs> so good. 
So you know, Nicholas Winding Refn is very, very inspired by yes by Tarkovsky. And, yeah, um, but he has made it more accessible for sure. M- yeah, exactly. Like, but Tarkovsky is, a, I mean, you know, if even if, if you've seen like, you would you say that he's the master of like ambience and like connection to kind of like. I think just the fact that he has that ability to stay in a place and just you know and and just let and to have that kind of belief in his writing, you know. Hmm. Uh, to just know because have you seen Mirror? I haven't. So Mirror is mostly has used his father's poems. He used his father's poems in order to uh, just kind of drive the plot forward. So uske uske dad ki poetry piche chal rahi hoti hai voiceover mein aur bas scenes chal rahe hain and to have that kind of belief in his filmmaking, you know, that yeah. all of this will come together and make sense and it really really affects you. So yeah, I think you you were right like I'm ambience more than anything else. Um I heard Sam Levinson actually talk about Tarkovsky and hmm. how he was kind of very inspired by like his visual style for the film, the black and white film that he did with Zendaya. Yes, yes, yes. M- Malcolm and Marie. Malcolm and Marie. Yeah. Um, and also a lot of like French new French stuff. The Malcolm and Marie Malcolm is kind of very like. It's more that. Yeah. More that, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so this is uh, this is some of my some of my f- films that I have here. Hmm. But yeah, uh, thanks, Harsh. Uh, this was super, super cool. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, I mean, I hope uh, I also. <laughs> I'm gonna have to reorganize this now. Oh yeah. Yeah. Good luck with that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, this was Harsh Rajan Kapoor. Yeah. Thanks, He's like guys. Reporting from his closet. All this right. was one of his many closets. One of his many closets. More. Yeah. I've, I have a. I have a. <laughs> Harder thing that I have going on that I need to stop. <laughs> All right. Cool. Okay. Thanks, sir. All right. All right. Hi guys, thank you so much for checking out this episode. Uh, a big, big thanks to Movie for collaborating with us on this video, on this episode. Um, we are so grateful to Movie for uh, for collaborating with us, for supporting us in all of these different experiments that we keep on doing. Uh, so thank you so much, uh, and uh, and a big thanks to Harsh as well. Harsh, thank you so much for letting us into your house, for going through your DVD collection, and for talking about it like this. Uh, I don't think anyone else would have done this, uh, would have done something like this. Um, and uh, thank you for continuously paving the way for great cinema in India. Um, and uh, one more thing, uh, in this bag, I have. Hmm. All of these DVDs, and there are a lot more inside. um all of these were gifted to me by harsh uh so again a big thank you so much harsh uh and especially this one dvd this one uh, i i'm not sure if this is dvd or if this is a blu ray uh um but yeah uh, yeah it's a dvd only but uh, a, an exclusive dvd uh, signed by vikramit motwani and anurag kashyap and harsh vardhan himself um like it's it's one of my prized possessions now if you guys haven't seen babe joshi yet check it out now guys like you're missing out big time and uh comment please please leave a comment let us know what you thought about the video what you thought about this episode uh let us know uh which was your favorite film from the whole collection um let us know which is your favorite film that is streaming on movie right now i would love to know and if you have any recommendations for me please let us know in the comments uh or आप क्या चाहेंगे हम लोग किस तरीके की वीडियोस करें इंडिया में सिनेमा के अराउंड इस कोर्स को बढ़ाने के लिए इम्प्रूव करने के लिए एंड वी आर ऑल इयर्स एंड नाउ टू मूव ऑन अ लिटिल मोर अबाउट मूवी मूवी इज़ वन ऑफ आर फेवरेट स्ट्रीमिंग प्लेटफॉर्म्स एंड मूवी क्रिएट्स एंड क्यूरेट्स फिल्म ब्रिंगिंग सिनेमा एंड इट्स डाइवर्स वॉइस टू पीपल फ्राम ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड फ्राम आइकॉनिक डायरेक्टर्स टू इमर्जिंग ऑटियर्स देर इज ऑलवेज समथिंग न्यू टू डिस्कवर With Mubi, each and every film that you see is hand selected by its team of curators. You can discover the best of cinema at your fingertips, streaming anytime, anywhere. Plus, with Mubi Go, you can also get a free cinema ticket every week to watch the latest releases on the big screen. You can try Mubi free for thirty days at mubi dot com slash hoc twenty twenty three. That is m u b i dot com slash hoc two zero two three for one whole month of great cinema for free. Since both Harsh and I love this film so much, I would like to strongly recommend Chunking Express on Mubi to you guys today. Chunking Express is a beautiful, groundbreaking, and deeply personal film by the iconic filmmaker Wong Kar Wai. 
divided into two intersecting sub stories this is a film about love loss heartbreak acceptance and finding love again this is also an ode to a city a city that the filmmaker grew up in his study of its cultural richness the culmination of its lights and colors and the beauty that hides beneath the layers of its various complexities Mubi currently has most films from Wong Kar Wai's filmography on the platform so after watching Chungking Express watch his other films as well you'll fall in love with him